We've had some guys get here a week before the race. We've had some guys uh, get in uh, two days before the race. So, I don't know. I think Imani Murgo is going to be tough because I think he's on top of his game. He's tra uh, training with Coach Canova. I think uh, Tedesi is always going to be a factor. Uh, they want to be somewhere around 13-18 for the 5K tonight. And hopefully, believe it or not, pick it up from there, which is awesome to me. Uh, you know, we had the great race in 2008, I believe, with... Uh, uh, at least I'm watching them start over here. They get, no, I just want to make sure with this field no one's... Uh, no one falls. Yeah, Kennedy's and McKaylee, excuse me, I think you went 26-25 or so here. He went out about 13.08, 13.09 that day. So it's going to be, this is a wide open race. Moses Masai, he's run 26.49 and 12.50. People haven't even talked about him. I think it just depends on who gets here in shape. And uh, as, as with any of these races, as you talk about the architecture of the deal, you get the best athletes in the world to come here, but you also set the stage for them to be at their best, which is to bring in some folks early on in the race that we'll see at the front of the pack that we won't talk about at the end. And uh, take us through finding folks who really, I mean, there's a job in yes. it for people who can do it well, which is their pace setters. Excellent tonight. point. Very good question. Finding rabbits for these races, the women's 5K, men's 10K, at this pace, they're extremely hard to do. So we've got uh, Tim Nelson, who's going to bring the uh, field through at least, we're hoping, 758, more or less, through 3,000. And then we got Thomas Longosiwa, who's a 13-minute guy. He's run 1306 this year. He's hoping to take it after Nelson uh, to 5,000 meters, hopefully in a right around... 1380. So, uh, just like in the women's 5,000, if you want to run 1420 or so in that area, you need an 830, 3,000 meter run, which is right at you know American record pace. So, finding rabbits pace setters for these races is sometimes as hard as finding a good runner. <laughs> Harder. And you see Career there, who's up in front. He should be taking the lead here for approximately four laps. So we're trying to give, again, even though Long Asiva has run 1306, to have him come out here, travel from Kenya, and run 1317, 1318 by himself is, is hard. So he even, so the rabbits need rabbits, you know, to uh, enable to, to stay on this pace. So basically we're looking, I think, this, to, to run 64s here very consistently right around in that area. And as I look across the field now, and you maybe can validate for me, I do not see Galen Rupp in the field. Then there was a chance, perhaps, that he was not Yeah, so I, I don't see him in there. I see Selinski in there, but that, that tells me the pollen count must have been That's high. I noticed it. I, I come down to Prefontaine. The first thing I notice in the early spring or, or late spring, early summer is that my eyes just squinty like crazy. Well, those of us who live here deal with it every day. Probably one of the only Achilles heel to this venue at certain times of the year. And a crash usually... Uh, right around the July 4th holiday in Western Oregon, but this year, because of the wet and rainy spring, it's really, in, it, the sun just came out 24 hours ago, and to your point, has exploded on the scene. So we expect Galen will be back here at Hayward Field for the U.S. Track and Field Championships as we prepare to pick a U.S. team to go on to Daegu for the World Championships, and so many of these athletes are on this track tonight as Ethiopian Kenyan are using these races as really a way that they can start to pick their best team to go into the World Championships uh, at the conclusion of the summer. Career continues to lead. Now you see Nelson moving into the front, and those, again, are our pace setters early on. We've got Long Asiwa in third, so the pace setters are all up there exactly where they need to be. I see Imani Murga, Tedesi right in there. They're not going to be far from the lead. Um, no, right now, after a couple laps into it, we're right where we need to be. See them on the back stretch here in front of the historic East Grandstands in Hayward Field. Uh, not only a spectacular night, but a spectacular crowd that's come out here. And you know, when you throw in a Friday night before a ticketed Saturday event, you worry in many markets whether people would come out even for the caliber of talent we had. But what's your initial look back now as you see the stands really full here on a, on a beautiful Friday night? I would say the stadium's close to half full, wouldn't you? I Six thousand people, would be my guess. Yep. This is similar, a little bit more than last week. I believe the final day at the regional, I'd say regional meeting. So I think it's a night, it's a beautiful night. And Tom told me today he was about 500 tickets away from the sellout tomorrow, which would put us around 12,000, 12,500. I think people are just happy to be outside. Yes, yeah, that's part of the world. Point. And in a lot of other places as well. This has been, as you just said, a, an unbelievable spring. I think we've had two days of sun uh, in the last three months, it seems like. And based on how it was this last week, this is, this is a godsend tonight and tomorrow. 
no win. So you see Nelson along with Seawitz still yeah. our pace setter. Yeah. Tedeschi running comfortably behind. Nelson will take it now, and then uh, Tedeschi, all the all your favorites are there. I think there's, I think the important thing in this race is just to settle in and not panic. There's a long way to go. I like where Selinski's hanging out in the back, seeing how he's feeling. Again, a lot of these guys have traveled in from Kenya and Ethiopia at the last minute, so I'm sure some of them are going to try to figure out how their legs are feeling. Uh, most of these guys are, you know, 10, 10 hours ahead of where we are now. So that's sometime in the middle of the night, early morning for them. Well, you mentioned Selinski really quick. Obviously, one of the big stories of last year when he, I guess, decided that 10K might be a fun distance to try and then pops off uh, in what many expected to be an American re record for Galen Rupp. Bested him, both of them, under that American record pace of the Stanford invite. And he is the current American record holder at 26.59.60, the only American under 27 minutes. And as you saw him develop as an athlete, uh, what struck you was really the potential to make him that kind of run? Uh, Chris? Or, or Chris, yeah. I think the thing about Chris is uh, he's always a, known as a tough runner at Wisconsin. And I think Jerry, he's got a great coach. Jerry Schumacher, they got a great, a great training group. They've been together a while. Uh, but I've seen, in my opinion, I've seen a transformation of Chris Selinski when he's moved out to Eugene. He's had a, a total body change. He must be 10 or 15 pounds lighter. When he first got here, um, he looked like Chris Selinski I saw when at Wisconsin. And as the first year went by, he, I, I remember walking past him by the uh, Lance Armstrong uh, rec center. I didn't even recognize him. His face, everything had just been chiseled down. Baby fat gone. Uh, just a lot leaner, fitter, crystalline. And I think, uh, so when I see him put in the extra miles, continue to work as a professional, professional, uh, keep developing, keep training. Um, you know, he's, he's built him, Jerry and him, and, and built him into a world-class athlete. What kind of uh, market segment lift and long running socks have you seen in the last year? No, those, uh, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. I was uh, driving a couple weeks ago. I must have been 10, I was headed to wine country, Pinot Noir country. I must have been 10 miles south heading out there, and I saw him on one of his long runs, way out there by himself on the road. So he's putting in the miles, he's logging in. He's just got a, you know, a lot of confidence. He went to Australia a couple months ago, hadn't done any work on the track, and I think ran 13.10, 13.11 there. That's when you know a guy's got it going, when he hasn't been out there on the track doing the speed work, doing all the intervals, and is able to go out there and start the season off at 13.10 without having done everything. That's when you know you got something, something going. Well, during the eight minute mark of this race, 18 laps remaining in this men's 10,000 meters. up on the 3,000 meter split when they reach the far end here from the foul plaza, about 805.24 at 3,000 meters. So right in between that uh, magic 27 minute mark, yeah, which is what we're looking 27 for. 27 flat there, like, well I would say in this field here, let's say they continue to run this pace, 27 minute pace, I could see this group, because of the depth of this group here, I could see this turning into a 26-40 race over the last mile and a half, two miles of the race, because I think they got a lot of speed in there. They've got a big pack in there. Uh, not, they want to be a little faster, as long as he was taking over here. But again, if they're at 27 minutes, I still believe this group is good enough to run 26-40 off of this pace. So Tedeschi is running second, Paul Tanui of Kenya is currently in third, I believe. I see Armani, yep, that's him with the Rosa look, the Dr. Rosa team. And then Armani Murga. Murga's going to be right there. He's going to, he's your stalker. He's going to sit there. He knows he's got the kick, he's got the speed in this field. Finished fourth I, at the World Championships in Berlin. Yep, and you know, coming off the world cross country, he's got a lot of confidence. Had a big kick in Rome, beating Isaiah Kiplanga Koic, who's the, the, the junior, ran 12.53 indoors. I wouldn't expect to see Murga lead too much of this race. 